Okay, so for question number 17, so this is question number 17, and you want to, for the function g, this is the function g, whose graph is given, arrange the following numbers in increasing order and explain your reasoning. So basically you have these numbers 0 and g prime of negative 2 and g prime of 0 and g prime of 2 and g prime of basically 4 you want to arrange this arrange in essentially in increasing order in increasing order so for example over here g prime of essentially zero so the zero is just a zero so we don't have to do anything about that g prime of negative two um, is this point over here this is negative two and um, g prime of negative two essentially would be the slope of this line which is tangent to the graph of this function of course not exactly this one would be essentially something like this this is the slope of this line would be g prime of negative two g prime of zero would be the slope of this line this is g prime of zero g prime of 2 would be the slope of this line essentially and g prime of 4 would be the slope of this line now you can see that essentially the now this is of course i have to do this in a better way you see over here g prime of negative 2 would be give or take essentially this graph this this is slope over here right now you can see that basically you can see that over here g prime of negative 2 g prime of negative 2 is a positive number right because the slope is positive g prime of 0 g prime of 0 is a negative number because the slope is negative and both of essentially all of these are um, essentially this is a positive slope this is also a positive slope so the only negative slope is g prime of 0 which means that um, which means that this is less than zero so I can write basically g prime of zero which is less than zero and I'm supposed to write these numbers in, in, in increasing order which means that I have to write from the smallest number and then I can put the zero over here so g prime of zero is taken care of this is also taken care of and then you're left with basically two essentially three more slopes the g prime of negative 2 g prime of negative 2 g prime of um, essentially g prime of 2 and g prime of 4 among this slope and this slope and this slope you can see that this is the this is this the, the smallest slope right this is compared to this one this one is a little bit larger and this one is the largest among these 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 three slopes so i can write g prime of four and then after that i can write basically g prime of two and then after that i can write g prime of g prime of negative two this is in increasing in increasing order Now the reason, the reason why I'm saying that 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 essentially that this is a 
the reason that I'm saying that this is a negative slope is that well of course it's a negative slope because because if you have if I have essentially this line over here right suppose that I take essentially two and and and, that, and for example I had basically a coordinate system like this and I had this line over here right suppose that I took an, essentially any two arbitrary points on the line for example this point over here and this point over here right now in order to get from this point to this point I have to basically I have to, to to run a little bit and I have to rise a little bit right so I have to run in this direction and then once I get here I have to I have to rise but I have to rise in, a, in the negative direction so you can see that you and of course you can see that the function essentially in and of itself is is decreasing meaning that as you get essentially towards these positive x's the value of the function is decreasing since the value of the function is decreasing that means that the slope is decreasing right so this is a negative slope in general this basically what you can say is that is a basically if this is a coordinate system if this is a horizontal line if this is a horizontal line the slope is the slope is zero the slope of a horizontal line is equal to zero right if basically if you have this line over here if this is y and this is x and this is a line and this is a vertical line and this is a vertical line the slope of this line is undefined right the slope of this line is undefined now if basically if you have a line which is an increasing function for example this case over here this is a positive slope because your function is increasing right an increasing function means that basically when I pick some point essentially over here when I move essentially towards the positive x's in this direction then basically when I for example of suppose that I stop over here and to get to any other point essentially any consecutive point on the line I have to rise in the positive direction to get to this point over here that means that as I increase the value of x the value of y essentially is increasing which means that this this is an increasing function which means that this is a positive slope right now suppose that you have for example this case over here this line over here and this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis you can see that this is a decreasing function meaning that as you increase the value of x the value of y is decreasing and since the function is decreasing the slope of the line is also decreasing and so this is a negative this is a negative slope right so now then the the next thing that you need to know about these slopes is that there is basically a as a as a slope which is zero and there is also a slope which is undefined meaning that your line if it's completely vertical the slope becomes undefined which means that essentially it's very it's it's it, the value uh, is 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 very close to very 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 large slopes and when the when the line is horizontal that means that basically the the rate of change of the function is zero which means that the slope is equal to zero if the slope is zero the rate of change of the function is equal to zero meaning that the value of this function at this point is for example if this, if this is y is equal to three if this is y is equal to three the value of the function at this point is three 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 is never changing right since it's never changing of course the slope there is no slope meaning that the slope is 
practically zero. For this function, um, for this function, basically the the change in y. So essentially, the slope of this line. Suppose that I take, for example, these two points. Call this x1, x1, y1, and call this, for example, x2 and y2. The slope of this line you can calculate it as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But since x1 and x2 are the exact same points, x2 minus x1 would be equal to zero, which means that you are diff dividing by zero which means that this is undefined you cannot divide by zero right now you need to as a result you can basically um, you can start with you can start with a with a, with essentially with a horizontal line like this and then um, increase the slope by basically and then keep increasing the slope meaning that this is a slope this is a slope zero for example if you want to increase the slope in the positive direction of course you have to create a, a an increasing function which means that you can increase the slope this way right this way essentially so this way you're actually increasing the slope of the slope these are all positive slope is in increasing order. You can just keep going until you get to until you get to vertical line. Meaning that you can just keep going in this direction like this and then you are as you're going in this direction you're increasing your slope in the positive direction. When you get to the when you get to the completely vertical line, this is a slope undefined. This is a slope undefined, right? And and then if you start from this end, essentially, meaning that meaning that basically if you do it essentially this way for example you have a, a a line like this for example this is the slope over here is zero and then to go in the negative direction you have to you have to keep this point constant or not moving and then keep going in this in this direction and these are as you keep going, your 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 dec essentially your um, the slope is getting a more large negative number, right? So this these are all negative slopes in in increasing order of large negative numbers. You can just keep going essentially in this direction as much as you want. You can just keep going like this and so on and so forth all of these are negative slopes until you get basically to the vertical line where the slope is the slope is undefined right now the slope of this line for example the slope of this line is something like for example negative one over a thousand Uh, very small right very very small when you get to when you get to this when you get to this line over here the slope is basically i mean if you want to think about numbers as 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 just simply the the value of the number the slope is actually um um Meaning that, for example, the slope over here becomes, for example, something like negative 2. The slope over here some becomes something like negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and so on and so forth. Meaning that as you, as you keep going in this direction, the slope is actually decreasing, right? 
because the value of the number is getting a a large and large and large and larger negative number essentially until you get to this point over here where the slope of the line becomes for example negative for example 10 raised to the power 6 negative 10 raised to the power 10 and so on and so forth right so that's essentially the that's essentially the the all about the slope of the slopes of these these lines now now that we got basically to the slope of these lines let me tell you one more thing about these slopes when we say that the slope of a line is equal to 2 is equal to 2 the slope is equal to is equal to 2 what that means is that basically if i had a coordinate system like this and if this was the x-axis and the y-axis and if basically if I if this was 1 and 2 and this was 1 and if the line was if I drew the line essentially between these two points you can see that I could I could say that the slope of this line the slope of the slope is equal to 2 what that means is that for one unit of positive horizontal change for essentially for one unit for one unit of positive horizontal change there is there is two units two units of positive positive ver vertical change right so for one unit of positive horizontal you can imagine essentially these two points over here for one unit of positive horizontal change there is two units of vertical positive vertical change right this is a slope of positive two now, if I say that the slope of a line is negative 2, for example, if I say that the slope of a line is equal to negative 2, what that means is that basically 1 and, for example, 2 units over here, and this point over here, and this line over here, and this line over here, and this is the y-axis, and this is the x-axis. I can say that the slope of this line is equal to negative 2 which means that for one unit of positive horizontal change there is there is two units of there is two units of vertical change in the negative direction and that means that basically there is a the slope of the line is a negative 2 right and so on and so forth and you can basically based on this you can do essentially all different types of things but but basically this um, this um, concept of a slope of a line is um, probably one of the main ideas of calculus meaning that calculus has a couple of main ideas there is um, it's just just simply the slope of a line I mean more than that you don't find in calculus you have essentially the uh, essentially you have the basic four operations in calculus and and basically the slope of a line which corresponds to the the rate of change in a in a function essentially more than that there is there is not much in calculus uh, all the other things that uh, that you do in calculus the underlying basic the principle of all of all of those things is just simply the slope of a line meaning that you're whatever whatever you're doing in calculus you're just basically simply talking about the slope of some line essentially okay okay so <clears throat> now this was question number 17 okay so the next question is question number 18 part a of this question 
is find an equation of the tangent line to the graph of y is equal to g of x at x is equal to 5 if g of 5 is equal to negative 3 and g prime of 5 is equal to 4 right so what this means is that that basically that whatever this graph is at x is equal to 5 which is 1 2 3 4 5 g of 5 is equal to negative 3 which means that essentially this point over here this is 5 and negative 3 so this is 5 comma negative 3 this point and g prime of 5 is equal to 4 which means that the um, which means that the um, which means that basically that that if you um, g prime of five five is equal to four, which means that to the graph of this function, essentially the instantaneous rate of change of the of the function at x is equal to five is equal to four, which means that basically if you move essentially one unit in the positive x direction you would have to move four units in the in the positive y direction which means that basically you would end up over here which means that basically the the tangent line itself would be basically this 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 is four units and this over here is one unit this basically means that the slope of this line is 4 to 1, which is equal to 4, right? Which simply means that you want to find the, the equation of a, of a line, this line over here. You want to find the equation of, the equation of a line with slope 4 passing through passing through the point 5 comma negative 3 which would be y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 which would be y minus y1 y plus 3 is equal to m which is the same thing as uh, slope 4 so 4 times x minus x1 minus 5 which is y plus 3 is equal to 4x minus 20 which means that y is equal to 4x negative 23 that's the that's the equation of your of your line negative 3 goes to the other side becomes negative 23 that's that that's essentially part a of this question question number 18 part b is if the tangent line to if the tangent line to y is equal to f of x at 4 comma 3 passes through the point passes through the point 2 comma 0 comma 2 find f of 4 and f prime of 4 so this means that basically you have essentially some function y is equal to f of x the tangent line to to the graph of this function at 4 comma 3 so 4 comma 3 would be 4 comma 3 over here this point is 4 comma 3 the tangent line essentially passes through the point 0 comma 2 0 comma 2 would be this point over here this is 0 comma 2 so the tangent line essentially passes through the passes through this point this is the tangent line. Then you want to find basically f of 4. So f of 4 is equal to 3. You can, you can already see that f of 4 is equal to 3. 
and f prime of 4 is basically the since this is the tangent line the slope of this line is the derivative of the function at this point so if you calculate the slope of this line that would be f prime of 4 right so f prime of 4 that the, the the slope of this line would be the same thing as basically y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 right which is the same thing as basically 3 minus 2 over 4 minus 0 over 4 minus 0 which is the same thing as 1 over 4 which is well that is essentially 1 over 1 over 4 this is essentially 1 over 4 which is 0 0.25 essentially so that's that's another part of this question question number 19 Okay, so question number 19 is a rather, um, I mean, for this question, we don't really have enough information, but let me draw a couple of things here, and I'll be back with. Okay, so for this question, basically, we know that you want to sketch the graph of a function, which is basically something like this. So you have... Um, f of 0, f of 0 is equal to 0, f prime of 0 is equal to 3, f prime of 1 is equal to 0, and f prime of 2 is equal to negative 1. Now, as I, as I mentioned, there is not enough information here, but, but, but then you, you somehow need to put a couple of things together to essentially do a some sort of approximation to the graph or something like that now f of zero is equal to zero would be this point over here so that that's that simple right now f prime of zero is equal to three that means that the derivative of the function at at zero is equal to three meaning that the tangent line that the tangent to the graph of the function at x is equal to zero the slope of that tangent line would be equal to 3, which means that basically you need to, you can draw a line tangent to the graph of the function, for example, uh, something like this, essentially. For example, if the slope of the line has to be 3, meaning that for one unit of horizontal change, you have 3 units of vertical change, which means that there would be a line, for example, something like this, right? Now, um, now the function has to make it make its way to 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 x is equal to one, some in some way or another. There is no way to know what the function is doing here, but let's assume that the function looks something like this, for example, in this area, and then at one the derivative of the function is zero, which means that basically that the rate of change is zero. The rate of change being zero is essentially is either a peak or a trough, right? You saw you saw essentially in the in the exercises that at this point the rate of change is zero. At this point, the rate of change is zero, which means that basically you would expect to have essentially some something like this essentially over here. So this is at x is equal to 1. At x is equal to 2, the slope, which is this point over here, the slope is supposed to be a, a negative a negative 1, which means that basically, for example, at this point, at x is equal to 2, the slope is negative 1, and negative 1 would be a line like this, something like this essentially. Okay, so it's, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, this is, of course, the, the question has a couple of problems, but now as I looked into the, <coughs> as I looked into the solution and this part over here, well, you can do it in any way that you want, really, because there is no information here. You could basically, you could do something like this, for example. 
and this is basically the solution that I got from the book itself. The book essentially proposes this type of solution. This is Alex is equal to 2. Alex is equal to 2. The slope is negative 1, which means that the slope over shear is negative 1. So uh, you could you could basically you could say that this slope is negative 1. This is essentially give or take. This is slope, you can call it a negative one. And so you can call it essentially the graph of the function. Now, the next question is question number 20. The next question is question number 20. And that is basically sketch the graph of the function g for which g of zero g of 0 is equal to g prime of 0 is equal to 0 g of g prime of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 g prime of 1 is equal to 3 and g prime of 2 is equal to 1 So to graph this function, so you know that essentially g of 0 is equal to 0 which is essentially this point over here now g prime of 0 is equal to 0 that means that this is either a peak or a trough meaning that it's either essentially something like this or it's something like this essentially or it's essentially something like this right one of these two essentially right and uh, then basically g prime of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 which means that which means that basically at negative 1 wherever the the output of the function is the the slope is supposed to be a negative 1 which which essentially agrees with this part over here uh, because the slope of the line over here is somewhere about somewhere about negative 1. So you, we can take essentially this part over here and since we have taken this um, we have taken this part we can forget about essentially the other part over here and g prime of 1 is equal to 3. g prime of 1 is equal to 3 would be basically a um, meaning that essentially you could you could have a slope 3 over here, which means that basically the slope of this line, for example, at this point is, is, is the slope is equal to, slope is equal to 3. Over here, the slope is equal to, slope is equal to negative 1. And g prime of 2 is equal to 1, which means that uh, the function essentially is kind of, is kind of um, basically um, is kind of essentially fast here at, at x is equal to one, and then it slows down at neg at at two, meaning that when it gets to two, the function kind of slows down to something like this. So that means that basically it becomes something like this. All right. So at at this point, essentially the slope becomes a one. Meaning that at this point, for example, somewhere over here, you can take this as slope is equal to 1, something like that. Not, I mean, you can do it in many different ways, but, but then you have to essentially take these, these few things into consideration. So, um, this was question number 20. Now, question number 21 is if f of x is equal to, if f of x is equal to 3 times x squared minus 5 times x, find f prime of 2, find f prime of 2, and use it to find an equation of the tangent line to the parabola and use it to 
find an equation find an equation of the tangent line of the tangent line to the parabola to the parabola y is equal to 3 times x squared minus 5 times x at the point at the point 2 comma 2 so this is an unusual type of question if f of x is equal to 3 times x squared minus 5 times x find f prime of 2 and use it to find an equation of the and use it to find an equation of the tangent line to the parabola y is equal to 3 times x squared minus 5 times x at the point 2 comma 2 okay so this is essentially the exact same parabola there is no difference between these two whatsoever so you want that that means that essentially you want to find basically the the equation of the tangent line to this parabola at the point two comma two essentially right so the, I, I will reword this question simply find the equation the equation of the tangent line of the tangent line to the parabola to the parabola f of x is equal to 3 times x squared minus 5 times x at 2 comma 2 right so how do you do this so you need to find basically you need to find essentially the um, to essentially to find the point so, so essentially first you need to find the um, the slope of the line so the slope of the line would be the derivative of the function at at 2 meaning that you want to find basically f prime of, of, of f prime of a you would find it as the limit of basically f of x plus h minus f of x over over h as h approaches 0 right which means that f prime of 2 you would calculate it as the limit of f of basically a plus this is supposed to be a and this is supposed to be a so a that's 2 plus h minus f of 2 over h as h approaches 0. Now with this parabola you can calculate f of 2 plus h is the same thing as basically 3 times basically 2 plus h raised to the second power minus 5 times 2 plus h which is the same thing as 3 times 2 squared equal to 4 plus 4 times h plus h squared minus 5 times is equal to negative 10 minus 5 times h which is the same thing as 12 plus 12 times h plus 3 times h squared minus 10 minus 5 times h which is the same thing as 3 times h squared minus 5 times plus 12 times h is equal to 7 times h and negative 10 plus 2 is equal to plus 2 right and we know that f of 2 is the same thing as 2 because the point is already given here f of 2 is equal to 2 as a result we can say that f prime of 2 f prime of 2 is the same thing as the limit of basically f of 2 plus h which is this thing over here 3 times h squared plus 7h plus 2 minus f of 2 which is minus 2 over h as h approaches 0 cancel these two out and you can write it as the limit of basically take an h out here h times 3h plus 7 
over h as h approaches 0. Cancel these two out. As h approaches 0, this becomes a 7. That means that the slope of the line is equal to 7. And the line goes through the point 2 comma 2, 2 comma 2. So we have we have basically y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So take this as x1, y1, y minus 2 is equal to 7 times x minus 2, which means that y is y minus 2 is equal to 7x minus 14, which means that y is equal to 7x minus 12. This is the equation of the line. Now take a look, let's take a look at the function. The function is 3x squared minus 5 times x. Three times x squared minus five times x and the point two comma two two comma two and it did essentially the 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 slope and uh, the line that we have found is y is equal to seven x seven x minus twelve. And you can see that the line is actually tangent to the graph of the function at this point. See that there is no difference between the graph of the function and tangent line at this point. Okay, so that's 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 essentially this question. Now let's take a look at question another question as well. Okay, so the next question is another, essentially the exact same type of question. That's the, the, the question is basically if g of x is equal to, g of x is equal to 1 minus x cube, find g prime of 0 and use it to find an equation of the tangent line to the curve y is equal to 1 minus, a, 1 minus x cube at the point 0 comma 1, which is to say that you want to find the equation of the tangent line. Find the equation of equation of tangent line to the graph of to G at the point at the point zero comma one. Right? So that means that basically first you need to find the, the slope of the line at zero, the slope, the slope of the tangent line at zero for this, for this function, which means that you need to find the derivative of this function at x is equal to zero, right? And I think one minus x cube is the same thing as, uh, you can even see it on a graph very easily. You see, x cube essentially is is this function over here, right? So you already know what x cube looks like. Negative x cube would be essentially the same thing flipped around the x-axis, which means that if you you flip it around the x-axis and if if you add one to that, the the whole thing will be shifted up essentially by by one unit, right? And now the the slope of the line, the slope of the essentially the derivative of this at the derivative of this at um, at um, zero, as you can see, is equal to zero, right? The derivative is equal to zero, meaning that if you zoom in on here. You can see that the derivative is actually equal to is equal to zero, meaning that if I draw a line over here going through this point zero comma one, I would have basically y minus y one. So y minus one is equal to zero, which is this line over here. Right? You can see that there is no difference whatsoever between the graph of the function and the line. So the, the slope is zero. 
You can, of course, calculate the slope as well, meaning that you can differentiate the function at x is equal to 0, which would be essentially, you, you, you would need to calculate essentially f prime of 0, right? And you know that f prime of a is the same thing as the limit of basically f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches 0, which means that f prime of f prime of 0 would be the same thing as the limit of f of h minus f of 0 over h as h approaches 0. f of h would be the same thing as f of h would be the same thing as 1 minus h cube. f of 0 would be the same thing as um, well this becomes 0 cube is equal to 0 so that's a 1 f of 0 is equal to 1 which means that basically you can say that the f prime of f prime of 0 would be the limit of f of h which is 1 minus h cube minus f of 0 minus 1 over h as h approaches 0 these two you can cancel out this becomes basically h squared as h approaches 0 this this whole thing essentially becomes 0 right now the, the line essentially is supposed to go through this point 0 comma 1 so you can write you can write basically y minus y1 is the same thing as m times x minus x1 since m is equal to 0 this is equal to m since m is equal to 0 you can write the equation of the line as y minus y1 is equal to 0 or y is equal to y1 right which means that the equation of the line, you can write it as y is equal to 1. And that is the equation of the line tangent to the graph of the function at, at this point. So this is y is equal to 1, the same thing that we have calculated here. This is the graph of the function. This is the line y is equal to y minus 1 is equal to 0 or y is equal to 1. Tangent to the graph of the function at this point. So that was question number 22. Question number 23 is, let me write down the question. Okay, so question number 23 is, is basically if f of x, if f of x is equal to 5x over, over 1 plus x squared, find you want to find essentially f prime of 2 and use it to find an equation of the tangent line to the same curve at the point 2 comma 2 tangent 2 at at basically at 2 comma 2 so to solve this problem what you can do is basically first you can graph this function which would be essentially 5x over 5x over 1 plus 1 plus x squared at 2 comma 2 Uh, basically the slope of the line would be basically y minus y1 which is equal to 2 is equal to m times x minus 2 and if I do a slider for m the slope of the line would be somewhere something like this essentially I think 0 0.65, 0 0.61 or so, 62, 63, 0 0.59, 55, 58, 58. Somewhere like 0 0.59, negative 0 0.59, right? 
So, um, so let's take a look at the, the equation. So to find the equation of the line, you want to find the, the derivative of the function at x is equal to 2, meaning that you want to find, you want to find basically f prime of, uh, basically, um, you know that f of, f of a is equal to the, f prime of a is equal to the limit of f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches 0 which means that f prime of 2 f prime of 2 would be the limit of basically f of uh, 2 plus h minus f of 2 over h as h approaches 0 so let's calculate f, f of 2 plus h f of basically 2 plus h would be the same thing as basically 5x over 1 plus 2 plus h raised to the second power which is the same thing as basically 5x over 1 plus 2 squared equal to 4 and 4 times h plus h squared which is the same thing as basically 5x over h squared plus 4 times h plus 5, right? Now f of 2 would be equal to, f of 2 would be equal to basically 5 times 2 is equal to 10, and 2 squared is equal to 4, 1 plus, squared, 1 plus 4 is equal to 5, 10 fifths is equal to 2. Which means that basically that, the, that f prime of, um, f prime of 2 would be the same thing as the limit of f of 2 plus h which is uh, which is essentially this fraction 5x over h squared plus 4 times h plus 5 minus f of 2 minus 2 over h as h approaches 0. Now let's simplify this. To simplify this, you can write it as 5x over <coughs> over h squared plus 4 times h plus 5 minus 2, which would be the same thing as basically, um, which would be the same thing as basically h squared plus 4 times h plus 5. And then over here you have 5x minus 2 times the denominator over here, which is h squared plus 4 times h plus 5. So this would be the same thing as basically uh, 5 times x minus 2 times h squared plus um, minus 8 times h minus 10. Now there must be some problem over here f of 2 plus h would be um, this has to be this has to be 5 times 2 plus h of course right this has to be 5 times 2 plus h which is the same thing as which is the same thing as basically 10 plus 5h. So this has to become essentially 10 plus 10 plus 5h. Uh, and uh, then we need to calculate this one more time. We calculate this one more time. So f prime of f prime of 2 would be the limit of basically this fraction which is 10 plus 5h over basically h squared plus 4 times h plus 5 minus f of 2 f of 2 is equal to 2 over h as h approaches as h approaches 0 
Now if I calculate the numerator here, that's that's basically 10 plus 5 times h over h squared plus 4 times h plus 5 minus 2, which is the same thing as basically h squared plus 4 times h plus 5. And this would be 10 plus 5 times h minus 2 times the denominator, which is h squared plus 4 times h plus 5. And this would be the same thing as basically 10 plus 5 times h minus 2 times h squared minus 8 times h minus 10 over h squared plus 4 times h plus 5. These two you can cancel out. And this would be the same thing as negative 2 times h squared negative 8 times h plus 5 times negative 3 times h over h squared plus 4 times h plus 5. Now, so essentially this, this essentially you can write it as, you can write this as the limit of um, this whole thing divided by h would be h multiplied by the denominator, which means that you can write this as negative 2 times h squared minus 3 times h h times basically h squared plus 4 times h plus 5 as h approaches 0, right? Next, you can take an h out from the numerator, meaning that you can write this as the limit of h times negative 2 times h negative 3 over h times basically h squared plus 4 times h plus 5 as h approaches 0 and then cancel these two out as h approaches 0 the numerator becomes basically a negative 3 the denominator becomes a 5 they get negative 3 fifths that means that basically f prime of 2 which is equal to m is equal to negative 3 fifths so that's one part of the question and then basically the, 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 the line goes through the point 2 comma 2 the line 2 comma 2 which means that y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 so y minus 2 is equal to negative 3 fifths times x minus 2 which means that y minus 2 is equal to negative 3 fifths times x plus 6 fifths now six fifths plus two is the same thing as is the same thing as basically six fifths plus basically ten ten fifths, which is equal to two. That's six ten fifths, which is equal to two. That's sixteen fifths. So y is equal to negative three fifths times x plus basically sixteen fifths. That's the equation of the line we were looking for so uh, so now if I if I graph this function over here and if I set the equation as if I write y is equal to raised 16 negative 3 fifths times x plus 16 fifths this is essentially the this is essentially the the um, tangent to the graph of the function at this point right okay so that was question number 23 in the next video, we will talk about the rest of these questions. Thank you.